Thanks everyone for being here. So Rob and I are here to talk to you all about streaming recording rules for Prometheus, Thanos, and Cortex using the M3 coordinator. All right, so just um, a little bit about us before getting started. So my name is Gibbs Cullen. I'm a developer advocate at Chronosphere. Um, during my time at Chronosphere, I've uh, helped work on the M3 project as a contributor, also a member of the CNCF observability tag, and, um, and then I think I have my Twitter up there as well. And I'm Rob, um, back uh, just to mainly do the demo with Gibbs here. Uh, as I mentioned before, I um, have worked on and create, created the M3DB open source project and also an open metrics um, contributor, which is a CNCF project uh, defining a standard for transmitting metrics uh, based on the Prometheus exposition format. All right, so just gonna go through the agenda real quick. So gonna start out going through the problem statement and then gonna talk about aggregation using Prometheus recording rules. And then we will go into streaming aggregation using uh, Prometheus in the M3 coordinator, which uh, Rob will then give a quick demo on, and then uh, time for Q&A. All right, so clearing high cardinality metrics. Okay, so here we have an example of a C Advisor dashboard. Uh, the C Advisor dashboard basically just provides um, resource usage and performance metrics of all your running containers, and in this particular dashboard, we're looking at um, all the containers are pods within the gateway application. And um, it's essentially just giving you a kind of a quick look or 10,000 foot view of uh, how all your um, applications are performing across your pods. So just looking um, into a particular panel here, looking at CPU usage across all of your pods, um, we're gonna look, take a deeper look into see kind of what it takes to kind of calculate this metric um, to kind of get the results you're you're seeing in this overview. So as you can see here in this in this um, query here, so we are looking at the CPU usage uh, metric, and you can see that it it's going to take quite a long time for you to render all of your query results, and that's because um, your query is pulling again across um, pulling all the labels across all of your pods and that's gonna result in about 51,000 uh, time series metrics. So with that sort of load, you're gonna have, uh, it's gonna take about 20 seconds for your um, query results to render. But in most cases, you don't typically need to have this um, look at all your uh, kind of pod level metrics. Um, so in most cases, you probably just wanna look at the aggregate level view to see what's going on across your pods. And so in order to do that, you can do some aggregation. So in this example, we are looking at just two labels. So we're aggregating on two labels, um, container name and namespace. And by, by doing this aggregation on these two labels, kind of before you do the query, you're able to cut down um, by quite a bit the time it takes for your results to render. So in this example, now it's only gonna take less than a second for your query results to render. And then, um, and it, that's mostly because you're cut it down to about 230 time series. Um, and one, one of the ways you can do this aggregation kind of before the query to get these um, improved results is through Prometheus recording rules. So just gonna go through what Prometheus recording rules are. Um, so essentially, they allow you to pre-compute um, frequently needed or computationally expensive expressions, which you can then store back as a new, um, new set of time series to your time series database. And these rules are typically evaluated uh, and pre-computed on uh, regular intervals, so using the cron job type processes. And this makes them really useful for dashboard purposes where you need to kind of use the same uh, expression um, over and over again uh, without having to, um, every, every time they refresh. And so recording rules will make it so that you don't have to kind of do that reevaluation every time. And again, um, they are, uh, because they are compatible and supported by Prometheus, you have all of your PromQL functions available to you. And in this slide, we're just gonna look at an example of a recording rule. So I believe the, um, the code here we have 
the CPU kind of usage metric that we are summing at a regular interval, so every minute in this recording rule, and then it's gonna be grouped by the two labels um, in the config, so container name and namespace. But basically inside this, um, inside this diagram you have your single Prometheus node, you have your rule manager, it's pinging the querier at these regular intervals, um, so these are some examples inside the diagram here, and at that point it's gonna create a brand new um, aggregated time series, which will then be um, sent to your time series database. And this is all, just to, just to know this is gonna be all done in memory and as like a single process. Um, but let's say you wanted to do aggreg aggregation outside of your Prometheus um, instances or in kind of use a remote storage solution um, for larger scale use cases and to also aggregate at almost any level of time series without increasing the load of your heavy recording rules, then M3, then kind of, you could do this using M3 in the M3 coordinator, which allows for the uh, streaming aggregation. Okay, so kind of just to um, go into a little bit more about how M3 does the streaming aggregation. First of all, just a quick review of a recap of what M3 is. So it's a remote storage, um, Prometheus remote storage solution. It's created back at Uber in 2016 to help um, manage their metrics monitoring use cases internally and now is used by many other big companies including, including Chronosphere. Um, and then with M3, so the aggregation is gonna be moved um, from kind of your recording rules to streaming aggregation and we're gonna do that using what we call roll-up rules. And roll-up rules um, essentially solve the same problem as Prometheus recording rules except we just take a slightly different approach. And what we do is we, um, through the aggregation using the M3 coordinator and in some use cases, the aggregator tiers, like in the diagram here, um, we use them to reconstitute metrics, so counters, gauges, um, histogram metrics, as if they had been exposed as an aggregate um, uh, from a single instance of an application versus from several instances of an application. Um, and, and then we also do provide another way to aggregate metrics through um, mapping rules, which essentially just does downsampling of metrics. But regardless, both ways of aggregation, um, once, once the aggregations are completed, uh, these new metrics will be then sent over to um, your time series database or your remote storage solution. And then, yeah, just zooming in a little bit and kind of recapping on those two ways of aggregating metrics. So with these visuals here, which I think are helpful. So we have um, kind of roll up rules, which essentially just roll up across um, or aggregate across multiple time series. And this is essentially just reduces your query time cardinality. And then we have mapping rules, which um, do the downsampling by doing aggregations inside a single time series and then making kind of these longer term um, or larger scale queries uh, more efficient as there I have uh, fewer samples. And now I'm just gonna quickly go through an example of a rule up rule and kind of how you would implement it. So we have um, kind of the configuration of what a rule up rule looks like here on this slide. But essentially rule up rules um, are just a series of transforms that are um, kind of done in order. So we have the three main steps we'll go through here, but you can see there's the, on the configuration we have um, kind of the, the roll up rule name and then there's the filter um, that we use as well. And then, and then in terms of the steps, we have our first step, which is to take the increases or the deltas um, between each of our uh, monotonic counters. So you can see in the bar chart we have, we're kind of measuring the little, the increments um, in between each of the counters, measuring the increases uh, or the deltas there. Second step would then be to um, kind of sum up the increases or the deltas. So kind of creating this new rolled up metric um, by the different labels that are presented in the group by um, line here. So by, in this example, container name and namespace. So once we've done um, the summing of those increases, then we can now do the final transform and the final step here, which is to create um, 
turn this metric into a monotonic um, cumulative counter, which will then be um, sent over and persisted to your um, time series database or remote storage. Um, and kind of when, that's when that has been done, you will use the uh, storage policies set in this configuration here to kind of dictate the resolution and retention periods. So that's kind of a quick overview of what that looks like. Um, and now Rob is going to go through how um, these two different approaches, so streaming aggregation with M3 and regular recording rules, how they are different from each other. Cheers. Thanks, Gibbs. Um, so yeah, I was going to just quickly step through a few of the, the, the differences um, at a high level and then um, give a quick demo if the demo gods are kind today, <clears throat> which they may not be, but we'll, we'll see. Um, and, uh, you know, I think what's first worth talking about is uh, this is actually a simil similar example that I talked um, just in the, the short um, earlier keynote. But uh, w when we look at, like, specific use cases that can be very high cardinality, um, and again, histograms tend to be a uh, obvious choice here because the, the amount of buckets which you define um, which gives you the level of granularity you want in terms of how precise your um, histogram measurements can be, uh, can multiply uh, your cardinality quite extensively. And so, you know, in this example, we're looking at, yeah, single microservice with 200 pods, um, 20 endpoints, HTTP or gRPC, um, a few, uh, measuring latency via the different status codes, uh, and then um, at, at a level of precision, um, that that can be defined by a spread of 30 histogram buckets. Um, so this is, you know, a single metric across a few endpoints that you might want to graph, like you might want the P99 of all of those endpoints on one panel in Grafana. Um, and that single panel uh, is, is going to be operating on 600,000 time series. Um, and, you know, it would be super nice if you could then also go and slice and dice those metrics by the, the Git server version or the mobile client front end version. Maybe you're running experiments and you want different uh, metrics based on uh, the subpopulations um, that the like, experiment groups for A-B testing and things like that. Um, and all of this is only going to multiply this like very high cardinality number. Um, so, uh, you know, Gibbs already ran through what um, a recording rule execution looks like. Um, and then in, in a distributed mode, this is essentially, you know, gets um, even more complicated because there's the hops are over the network here. Uh, so w when you're pulling data back from storage, if you actually want to reconstitute an aggregation across multiple Prometheus instances, if you're using, say, Thanos um, and the Thanos sidecar, um, or, or with Cortex, it would be from all the Cortex storage nodes, uh, you have to pull all that back. Um, and then write it back again very frequently. Um, so, and, and to concretely walk through what that might look like, uh, you know, if we have, if you have four Prometheus instances and you're, um, uh, again, for this single metric are, uh, for one service, are uh, trying to calculate the, um, the histogram of, it, of those four storage nodes, each are returning 150,000 time series all over the network to a single Thanos query instance. Um, that's all operating in memory, uh, which, which has obviously memory constraints. Um, and then if it can't execute fast enough, then uh, you, you're getting data that's kind of uh, I irregular um, comparative to when you collected it. Uh, and so M3 aggregation can supplement recording rules. Be, um, now, as kind of Gibbs already said, it, it reconstitutes the metric. It doesn't allow arbitrary PromQL. Um, but again, the majority of the problem here is not uh, in any other part of the expression except um, a few distinct high cardinality labels that you can aggregate away and reconstitute a new counter as if it was aggregated from one place. So it saves on that expensive um, step that, that runs over the network. Uh, it also um, <clears throat> avoids this reverse index query pressure and just relieves um, query bandwidth on uh, Prometheus or your remote storage in general, so you can separate and scale aggregation independently to the TSDB um, and not be bottlenecked uh, there or slow down dashboard or, or other alerts. Um, and then, and of course, you can pack way more alerts in then and um, also scale your dashboard traffic um, uh, w without having to 
pay the cost of recording rules at that layer. Uh, and then, you know, uh, you can also use templated aggregation rules, which can be really powerful um, to uh, deploy this use case across many different metric names uh, without having to go and one off for every single panel that you're trying to speed up, um, go and create a rule for. This allows you to say, I just want anything that matches a specific filter to exclude um, a certain high cardinality label that I know exists on all of my metrics, uh, like the pod or instance. Um, and so <clears throat> we're going to have a look at uh, what this looks like in reality. Now, bear with me, because I am going to try to just uh, remove the screen mirroring here and get my terminal on back on my laptop. <coughs> All right. All right, and battery is also low. <laughs> um, so um, let's just have a look at uh, the demo that I'm about to run through. So basically, um, we have a Docker Compose stack here, and this is, so yeah, you can check this out um, just from the M3 repo. There's also, you can get here via the docs. So. You go to the M3 docs, then you go to integrations, and instead of going to the default Prometheus um, remote storage aggregation inquiry with M3, you go to the aggregation for Prometheus Thanos or other remote write storage. Um, and this will highlight the Docker Compose stack that I'm about to run through. So it, it has a deep link to um, the development stack that I'm, I'm about to run locally. What's interesting here in the development stack is you, you basically we have if we go look at the Docker Compose file, um, we have a coordinator which is receiving traffic from a Prometheus scraper. So this, scrape, this Prometheus instance just acts purely as a scraper, sends all of its data to um, M3 coordinator at one through remote right. Yeah, that is a good call, thank you. Um, uh, I'll do that on the terminal as well. So this, this Prometheus scraper, um, basically scrapes a whole bunch of C advisor metrics in this demo um, and sends them to M3 coordinator uh, via Prometheus remote write. And then um, in either you can use M3 coordinator by itself uh, to aggregate in, in, um, in memory in a, use, in, with a single replica of it running um, as a sidecar. And then it can basically um, aggregate across those metrics and give you uh, rolled up metrics um, and, and then it sends basically data either to two different Prometheus instances. One's called Roar, which is just storing back the samples that the scraper was sending in, and then the other one is Aggregate, which is um, receiving both time series that were aggregated using rules that you defined, as well as downsampled uh, to like either one minute or five minute of resolution. Um, so that, that it basically means you can get uh, different levels of uh, resolution similar to how Thanos does um, uh, batch down sampling. But this is all happening in real time, so it's available like every five minutes um, as a data point is ready. So what the config looks like here is, you know, you have basically these, uh, this is the roll-up rule, so it's saying for, uh, so in this specific example, I'm not using the template, like I, which is a little bit more complex. Um, I'm specifically saying I want to match exactly this metric name, uh, take the increase of it, um, group by these dimensions, which is the container, the namespace, and um, the CPU index, so if you want to look at stats on a per CPU basis, but not across all the instances. And then we're building the, the um, monotonic counter again here. Uh, and we're storing it in, this storage policy tells us which Prometheus, those, those two Prometheuses that we had, which one to store it in. And those are defined up here. Uh, we have the raw Prometheus um, <clears throat> uh, basically taking uh, any unaggregated metrics and then the aggregated one um, receiving anything that's been defined for one hour and one minute resolution uh, by the rules that we have down here. Um, so I've been running this for uh, the length of the talk and that's probably why I don't have many, don't have a whole lot of battery left. Um, so if we log in here, 
we can kind of see the different, yeah, great, the different, um, the different metrics. So here, these are the unaggregated metrics. This is the CPU usage seconds total, um, and it's at two minutes apart interval. You can see here that the results, and, and we're summing by container and namespace. Um, <clears throat> this is the aggregate one, which is the exact same shape of data and everything else, uh, but it's using the rolled up metric name. And it's, you know, we don't even have to, so the, under, the only um, uh, labels on this metric are the ones that we define to keep. Um, and so that's why on the right here, where we're actually doing the, you know, the, the count of the, um, the underlying metric name, so to, to view the cardinality of each of these, you can see that the raw metrics is in the th thousands um, for, for these, whereas the aggregated one is just at the granularity you need to view your data in your graphs. At, uh, and so obviously, over large periods of times with you know, lots of pods rather than a small demo environment I'm monitoring, um, this really adds up because it's you know, a factor of 1,000 divided by um, 23, so you know, 43, 43x uh, larger. Uh, in terms of cardinality. And yeah, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to step you through. Um, I think we have a brief amount of time to do Q&A perhaps. Yeah, I think a few minutes. Great, and um, yeah, it'd be great to, to, to also catch up after the talk um, uh, at, at the event at 5 p.m. or we, we also have a booth on Wednesday if you wanna come chat about open source or non -open, anything else. Yeah, thank you. Does anybody have any questions? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this over with some, with some wipes and we can hand it off. Uh, so I have a question about where this fits in with the, with the receiver setup in Thanos. Um, and so would this be in front of the receiver and then it would just proxy those, those requests back to the receiver behind it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so basically, uh, if, if you're using a Thanos receiver already instead of like a Thanos sidecar, then uh, yeah, you can point um, the N3 coordinator to just write its results to that Thanos receiver. Uh, so instead of writing directly to the uh, Thanos receiver via remote write, you write to the coordinator via remote write and then have the coordinator point to uh, the Thanos receiver. Uh, and, and then the optional part of, the, of um, this whole thing as well is if you wanted to not just use a single process for the N3 coordinator is, is having a cluster of N3 aggregators which the coordinator can use for, for distributed stateful aggregation. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, thanks for your talk. Um, what are some best practices you recommend to avoid like false positives on your alerts um, that do pr prom? Do that. I heard uh, to avoid false positive and then I lost that last word. Oh, and, and how do you, in Prometheus, how, how, how can you avoid like false positives and fire, alarms firing when they shouldn't be, when the, you know? Yeah, interesting. Um, do, do you have a specific example, like maybe like latency going too high, or like w w what kind of false positives? Um, uh, wh where are you thinking through? Yeah, like c CPU spikes, HTTP requests, you know, things like that. Um, like, would you use standard deviation or? Yeah, that that's a really interesting question. Um, so, and just to repeat it, I guess, yeah, you know, CPU spikes latency deviation um yeah I, I think everyone struggles with this one you know it, it, everyone has their own strategies obviously using a sustained high period um for you know for like latency spikes can help um in terms of like what's known good standard deviation um does tend to work well uh but it, it requires a lot of care, right? Like looking at week over week data, like my, using an offset by seven days and comparing that to the current, um, that's, that's all pretty, uh, um, yeah, it requires a lot of human curation. Um, I, I, I would say there's probably better sources that, than me that, that have deeply written about it. Um, 
uh, but you know the the industry best standard really with uh, Prometheus tends to be standard deviation uh, with with like a lot of care and curation. And also, did you change the Prometheus YAML file as well, um, or using your own custom one? Uh, for uh, so the the main thing that we altered Prometheus to do is just send remote write to N3 coordinator. So it's adding the Prometheus remote write endpoint to the uh, to Prometheus itself. So everything that it's scraping, it's sending off to to N3 coordinator. Uh, thank you. Hi there, uh, thank you for your talk. Um, one of the challenges with Prometheus is the high, cardina high cardinality with uh, the metrics that you have available. And um, something that can help with that challenge is uh, the recording rules, which you talked about. Um, going a step further, M3 appears to be able to help with the roll-up and mapping rules, uh, again, to help with the high cardinality of the recording rules that you might be creating on a label by label or aggregation by aggregation basis. Um, what are some best practices you might recommend around a new user for M3 from creating uh, or abusing the uh, sheer number of cardinality of these recording rules and mapping rules that you could be creating um, with M3? So uh, just so I understand the question, it's basically um, how, how to think about the vast number of like specific aggregations that you configure? Yeah, for example, uh, you might be taking a look at um, multiple types of aggregations on top of a single metric, such as the SUM or the P99 or things like that. Why not all of them? How does that help shift the problem of the high cardinality of the labels that uh, exist into the high cardinality of uh, rules that you might be right. aggregating over? Yeah, that, that's where the metric template, uh, sorry, the aggregation template really you know, shines um, in that you define like anything that matches underscore total, if you assume that to be a counter, then you can exclude by, uh, you, you can apply a roll up of increases and deltas and then, um, and then build a monotonic counter on those um, and use the metric name as the, the resulting, imp, like, as a variable for the output metric name. So that way it, it'll dynamically build essentially a recording rule on the fly. Um, again, it's not as powerful as recording rules because it's reconstituting the metric rather than giving you like arbitrary Prometheus, the PromQL, but the templating aspect is very powerful. Wonderful, thank you. All right, then I guess I'm the last question. Um, can you share a little bit about the circumstances that caused you to design and implement this? To, to uh, design. To design and implement this aggregator. Oh yeah, great, thanks so much. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I think Gibbs touched on it a little bit. Um, it, it's been part of M3 since M3 was uh, built as a remote storage um, at, at Uber, and uh, the, the main the main reason why you know that that was really done uh, it was that it it, it had, that we had all these high cardinality um, uh, use cases. And it was just very difficult for all the developers to, to go and curate and specifically protect against cardinality explosion in every single one of their um, different things that they were monitoring. Um, and so, you know, the, the aggregator was built to be able to like give the power back to the end users so they don't have to go and re-instrument their application. They can just derive different pivots of the same very high cardinality data that they're pumping in. Um, so at some point, you know, you can just throw money at the problem to collect the metrics, but then the dashboard spinner <laughs> or the timeouts, you know, of, um, of your evals start to hit. So it, this is a way to like, basically without changing your code, get to the actual result you want um, around that. Very cool. Thank you very much. And thanks for the talk. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.